Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the choosy girl bears blouse, tie and pleated skirt. The video is very detailed, but you will need the written pattern to enable you to get the stitch count right. So in the description bar, I think below here, you'll find a link to the actual bear tutorial video and also a link to my Etsy shop where you can buy the full written pattern for the bear and all the clothes. For the teddy and the outfits, I recommend the Sheep Jazz Soft Fun yarn. Whoops, there you go. But if you don't have this in your country, then a similar DK or light worsted number three yarn of your choice will be fine as long as you make sure you use the same yarn for both the bear and the clothes, or else I can't guarantee that the clothes would fit. I'm also going to be using, for most of the clothes, a three millimeter hook, um, but I do use a 2.5 for the more intricate things like the stitching and the tie. I recommend a darning needle with a very sharp point, but a large eye and also stitch markers. Okay, so let's get started. So this time when I do the blouse, I'm going to leave quite a long tail and we'll need that for sewing later. So I've made my chain and I'm going to go through how you read the first row because I've tried various times for trying to follow the instructions on film and I keep getting it wrong because you've got to really concentrate and do exactly what it says in each stitch. But it's very clear um, you don't need me to go through the whole pattern to do this. As long as you follow what it says, your stitch count will be right. So we're starting with row one, and that's one single crochet in the second bump from the hook. So that's when I talk about the bumps, I'm talking about these bumps on the back of the chain. There's your second bump, which is just there, and we're going to do one single crochet in the second bump from the hook. We're then going to do one single crochet in the next bump. It then asks you to do an increase in the next bump. So an increase is two single crochets into the same stitch. One and two. Instruction four says to then continue with one single crochet and then an increase five times. So we do one single crochet and then an increase, that's one. One single crochet and then an increase, so that would be two. Then one single crochet, then an increase, and that would be three. One single crochet and an increase, so that's four, and then one single crochet and an increase, that is five. Right, so after that, it then asks you to just do one more single crochet. And this means you'll have arrived in the middle of the neck. So you should have 20 stitches at that part of the neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And there should, that's 20 and it says you should have 18 left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 left. So I'm right in the middle. Can you see how it's starting to curve round? This is the neck that's curving round. So we now need to do a mirror image. So if you follow the instructions, it says one single crochet in the next bump. then an increase in the next bump. Then one single crochet in the next bump. And then it says it wants you to continue with an increase and one single, then one single crochet five more times. So that's an increase. and one. So I'm doing an increase that will be two then an increase that will be three Then an increase, whoops, and then we just finish off with a single crochet. This is why I don't like doing this on camera, there's too much counting. And I'll be left with four chains, one, two, three, four, and that's going to form a little buttonhole loop on the neck. And on there, there'll be 40 stitches. So you can see it will start to curve round. And because we worked in the back bump only, you get this nice chain round the neck as well. Now what I've been experimenting with is on the next row, every row you do need to turn. Now normally you would chain one and then turn your work. But what I'm finding is if you don't chain one but just turn your work, you get a lovely straight edge. Now, don't worry if you don't like doing this, um, if it feels uncomfortable, but I've sort of got used to it now. And I, I like, quite like turning without making the chain. But when you turn without making the chain, normally I turn that way, whereas this time I'm going to turn that way and I'm going to work straight back into that first stitch there. So this would be row two, and in row two, it's very simply just one single crochet in every stitch across for 40 single crochets. All the way round. Now then, as I say, at the end of this row, you, again, you'll either chain one and turn if that's how you, that's what you prefer, or just turn your work because you do start to get a very straight edge without when you don't chain one. So I'm going to let you now continue all the way up to row four, because as long as you follow, so row three, for instance, will be one single crochet in the next two stitches, increase in the next stitch then continue with one single crochet in two stitches, then an increase five more times. So you've just got to keep a, keep a count of exactly what you're doing. Um, and then you'll end up with the right amount of stitches, 52 at the end. And we'll continue then with the armholes. I've now finished my third row and I've got 52 stitches all the way around. And I also, steamed it slightly because it does start to curl up. Uh, this is cotton yarn so it, it it steams very very well. As I say I can't stress enough if you're using acrylic yarn don't steam with a very very hot iron or you'll melt your yarn but cotton yarn does will take a steam iron quite nicely. Um, so as I say this second the sorry, I did the third round and then I did the fourth because the fourth was simply 52 stitches all the way around. The third row is quite hard. You've just got to count 
accurately every stitch that you do um, so that you get the right shape like this. But if you just take it slowly, it's very clearly laid out for you. So now we're going to form the armholes. So forming the armholes, one single crochet in the next six stitches. Now, as you see, I've, I've not been chaining one, so I'm getting this lovely straight edge. Uh, don't worry if you prefer to chain one, it's whatever preference, but I'm going to just turn my work like that. And I'm going to do one single crochet in the next six stitches. So straight back into that first one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we need to chain two. So that's one and two and skip 12 stitches. So count the 12 stitches straight after this one. So that's one, two. It's very bright, isn't it? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelfth. So put a single crochet into that 13th stitch, like so. Then do one single crochet in the next 15. One, two, fourteen, and fifteen. Now we're going to chain two again, and we're going to miss off twelve stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 and then one single crochet into the next six stitches so that's the six that are going along there so that's one two three four five and six. Okay, so now the pattern gets you to check whether you've got this uh, blouse the right side out. I don't think I have. So the, if the blouse is the right way up and it's facing you, so that's the back where we will put the buttonhole on, then the starting tail should be on the left. Where are we? Sorry. Check that the blouse is the right side out. If the blouse is the right way up and the back, sorry, is facing you, then the starting tail should be on the left. Well, my starting tail is actually, that's the starting tail here, on the right. So I know that my blouse is inside out. So we just need to flip those arms like that with the back facing me. Now my starting tail is on the left, so we know this is the right way out. And now we're going to turn again and we're going to single crochet all the way along the bottom and over the two armholes. Oh, oh, sorry. And, uh, over the two chains that are under the arms. So that's up to there, go straight into there. And then you've got two chains here. So we're going to go into the first one, the second one, and then back along the back. Like 
that's the last one in the back and then you've got those two chains again so one in there and then one in there and then just all the way to the end And then if you count all those stitches along, including the two under the armhole, there should be 32 stitches in all. Oh no, that's the right way around. So the back's, that's the back facing me, starting tail is on the left, so that's the front of the blouse. Now I would continue now right up to row 13. Let's just count our rows here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've done my sixth row. Continue up to row 13. There are going to be a couple more increases just to make the blouse a little bit wider. Um, and then I'll take you through doing the collar. But the next part to the to the end, to the bottom of the blouse is pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, so I finished my 13 rows and you'll be finishing on the right side of the shirt. And again, the right side always has this nice neat braid around the bottom of it. The wrong side doesn't. So that's how you know you're on the right side. So we need to cut our yarn. Leave quite a long tail because we're going to sew the back up with that. And rather than the knot, I'm just going to pull that through like that. And then I'll finish off with an invisible stitch on the other side. So now we're going to do the armholes. And we start with the back facing us, like so. We're going to start with the right sleeve. Now we start the right sleeve in the very corner, that first stitch just there. So pull up a loop of yarn, leave a long tail to sew in, chain one just to attach it and then go straight back in with your single crochet. And now you need to do 17 single crochets. So that's that's your first one. One, two, three, eleven, twelve takes you to the edge of the sleeve. Let's put another one right in the corner there. I'm not going to go under the, into that hole because it'll create a bigger hole. I'm, I'm going to go in here and that is under two loops just there. So that's your 13th. Goes in there. Then we can go into that little hole there. Oh dear with 14. So it's just a bit fiddly trying to do this on camera. 14. 15 is one of the chains under the arms. 16 is your other chain. Again, I'm going to try and go over under two loops if you can, it just makes a stronger finish. And then back into the corner for the 17th stitch. So that's 17 all around. That's your last stitch, so pop in a stitch marker. Then don't chain one, just continue in the round, going straight back into that first single crochet, not into the chain that you made, but into the first single crochet. And this will be your second round. 
all the way around. So how many rounds am I doing? Three rows all together. So this is the second row. And then I'll also do a third row. And I'll see you when I've done that. Right, I'm just about to finish my third row. I did forget to mention that obviously on the sleeves, we're not going back and forward like we did with the cardigan. We're just working in a continual spiral, which is why it's even more important to put your stitch marker in. So I'm doing my last stitch of my third round, but I want this to sort of finish off neatly. So my last stitch is going to be a slip stitch to bring it closer to the level of the next round. Then I'm going to cut my yarn, look for a needle, there we go, pull my yarn through, don't lose that stitch. And again, I'm going to do this invisible finish so that you can't see where the stitches end. So I'm going to do an invisible finish over the top of this stitch through the back of there. So my yarn is pulled through. And I'm just going to go back down through there. Just catch it at the back a bit so that you're not, so that the stitch is quite strong. Whoops, got too many, too much yarn here. And now again, if you just weave in your ends, you literally can't see where you started that row. I'll weave in the ends later, but let's just start the other arm. I'm just trying to think of the best place to start it for the left arm. Start in this corner by pulling up a loop. That's the back corner. That's not a stitch, but the corner. Chain one to attach the yarn. Go straight back in there. We needed to do five across the bottom, so there's one. I'll go into that corner stitch there. Two. Under the two chains, try and go the Go under two loops if possible. Whoops, yes. Three. There's the other chain. Four. And into that next corner. Let's make that five. And now we can do 12 all the way around the stitches. So that's five, six, sixteen and seventeen stitches there. So put the stitch marker in to show that it is the seventeenth stitch. And now we work straight back in to that first stitch that you made, which is here. That was the chain that you attached it with. So we need to do two more rows. This will be the second row. One, two, Three, oops, what a funny angle, I'm sorry. Three, four, five. So all the way around, round the other side, take out your stitch marker, put the stitch marker back in, do a third row and then make sure that your last stitch of the fir third row is a slip stitch and then finish off with the invisible finish like we did on the other arm and then we can start the collar.
I've now sewn in all my loose ends in the blouse on the inside. You can see here where we're going to use this loop. That's going to be sewn in to make like a buttonhole loop with a button on the other side. And we'll sew this bit up later. But it's easier to be able to keep the card, the sorry, the shirt open. So we don't want to close that up just yet. So if you turn the blouse to the back, we're going to do this left collar first. And we start that by counting 13 stitches, not counting the four that are going to make the loop. So there's one, two, three, four. So count 13 stitches from left to right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And we're going to attach the yarn in the back loop only because we want the collar to fold. So if you attach your yarn there with a, a loop just to attach it, and then you start your first single crochet straight back in there. That's your first one. And we need to do duh, 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 11 single crochets. That's one back loop only. Two, three, four, and eleven. Now there will be two left, two chains left on the at the back of the blouse, and then there'll be a four to make the loop. So I'm going to turn again without chaining, just to get that neat edge. So turning that way. So row two is one single crochet in the first stitch. One single crochet, both loops only this time. And increase in the second stitch. So that's two in the second stitch. Then we're going to do one single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, seven. We're going to do an increase in the next stitch. That's two single crochets in the same stitch. And one single crochet in that last stitch. Then again I'm going to turn without chaining one. Row three is one single crochet in the first stitch. Two in the next. Then we're going to do four stitches. One two, three, four. That brings us to the middle of the collar. So we're going to do two in there. And four more. One, two, three, four, Two in the second to last stitch. One, two, and then, whoops, one in the last stitch. I'm turning. At the end of that row, let's just count that one. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 stitches in that row. So the fourth row will be one single crochet in the first stitch, two in the second, so that's an increase, one single crochet in 12, one,
11, 12, 2 in the second to last, and 1 right in that last stitch. And these last stitches are always quite tight when I haven't done a chain 1 when turning. So at the end of that row, you should have 18 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches. Now then, what we're going to do now is cut the yarn. You can see how now the collar is folding over nicely on that side. But we are going to add a fifth row but not just yet, you'll see why in a minute. So the way I finish this off is by cutting the yarn. Now then we don't knot this, but we want to keep this stitch nice and visible because we're going to be single crocheting over that again. So the way to sew in that end is just to neatly work through the back of those stitches like so but make sure that last stitch is still visible like that because you're going to be working into that later and so in all your other end ends and I'll show you how we start the next collar. For the right collar we want to make it completely symmetrical with the left collar. So we're going to count in three chains. There's your first chain. One, two, three, and attach the yarn here with a chain and then a single crochet straight back in. There's your single crochet and we're going to do 11, that's one, in the back loop only. One, two, ten. 11. Now then, when you've done that 11th stitch, there should be a gap of two stitches in the middle of the collar. And you need a gap of two stitches so that the tie fits in there very neatly. So from here on, you follow exactly the same as you did for the left collar for four rows. And then when I've done four rows, we'll then do the fifth row together. Each collar has now got four rows in it and they're identical. But we want to finish off the edge of both collars so that you get that pretty, I don't know, like a sort of sailor collar edging. You don't get this rough edging on the front here. So let's take this slowly because I'm going to have to read what I'm doing at the same time. And we're going to, because we're going to go across both collars. So at the end of the fourth row, on the right hand collar, don't cut your yarn, but put a single crochet in that first stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. Then we're going to do, let me have a look, one single crochet, increase the sections. Then we need to do 15 across the collar, one, two, three, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And now this is the very last stitch we want to turn a corner. So I'm going to put three single crochets into that very last stitch. One, two, and three. 
Then the pattern asks for three single crochets along the actual edge to make that look prettier. So you've gone in there, so let's go into the next position, which would be there. Let me help you with this. It's in each row, basically. So I'm going to go into that little hole there. One. Then I'm going to go into there. Two. Then there's another edge hole there. Three. Now it wants slip stitches, four slip stitches across the back, and that's in the front loops only. So you've got two going across the neck there, but you've also got one there and one there where we attached the collar. So I'm just going to make sure that's nice and tight, that last stitch. Then I'm going to slip stitch into there. So that's pulling your yarn through both stitches. Then slip stitch through the two front loops across the blouse. Did I, did I split my yarn? It's very easy to split your yarn. And then a slip stitch into that little last one there. So then we should do three more down the side, three more single crochets down the side of the collar. So that's one, two, and three. And now remember we kept to keep this visible when we finished this corner off. So we want to put three into that first corner stitch. One, two, and three. And one single crochet in the next 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, two in the second to last, and then one in that last stitch. And there, when you turn the shirt round, the collar has a loose thread. The collar has a neat edging all the way round it, which we can now embroider into with the grey stitching. So sew in all your ends. Again, to make a neat finish, I like to just pull that through and then neatly just sew that underneath so you get a you don't get a hard knot at the end. And we'll finish the blouse off. Now the collar looks quite neat and tidy like that, just a white collar, but I think the grey edging just that matches the skirt just makes it pop a little bit more. So with grey yarn, or whatever colour you've done your skirt in, and a 2.5 millimetre hook. Just place on the very last row. Where am I going to start with that? 
want it on the very edge. So I'm just going to, it's difficult to get it under there. So I'm going to put it in there, pull up a loop. And then just chain stitch in every stitch along, giving a long tail so you can sew that in later. Oh dear, we're chain stitching, we're not single crocheting, so it will, it's very similar to slip stitching actually. And all the way around the curve of that collar. Up the other side. Two. So there's just one more to do there. So you've done three after you've done... Can I fit another one in? Yes, I'll fit one more in there. Because then I can show you how we neatly finish off that chain stitch. So if I cut the yarn pull it through and then with your darning needle I've lost my darning needle just go straight back in there and that just finishes off the collar and you can do exactly the same on the other side. The best place to start your grey stitching on the other collar is if you count the two stitches that went in between the collar. There's one, there's two. That was your slip, first slip stitch, second, third. Just put your wool or put your hook directly under that fourth slip stitch that you made. Pull up your yarn and then start to crochet or slip stitch if you like all the way around the other collar. That way you get an absolute symmetrical look at both ends. So don't forget your three stitches round. These are a bit tight. One, two, three, and then all the way round the other side and then neatly weave in the ends of the grey stitching. So the joining of the, the back, I like to just put a single stitch in the back just so you've got a nice big opening there. So where we just pulled the yarn through, I'm going to make a sort of invisible stitch, if you like, through the back of there and just down through there. And that's just a nice little neat finish at the bottom but really do weave in this 
tail well because there'll be you'll get a bit of strain on that join. So I'm going to put it under four stitches at the back just to hold that tight and then I'm going to bring it back again just so that really stays in place. Cut the yarn. I've actually um, sewn my loop and again make sure you sew that quite tight because you'll get some strain on there. So with the end tail I sew, I sew loop to there and then you'll just need a little button placing there and then your blouse will be done. Now for the tie. Now the tie. Although this is pretty straightforward, the tie has to be incredibly neat because it's a massive focal point right in the middle of the shirt. And it's it's just one piece with an edge round it. But if you if you can imagine, if I just folded one piece in half, then you'd end up with this half showing the back of the stitches, which I don't like, it's kind of messy. So I'm needing to make the edge so that behind here, the edging turns round and you see the front of the edging on the other side. Then of course, this is um, red yarn wound round. Now, because it's it needs to be very flat and very neat and just fit nicely under the chin. So the yarn that we used for the bear and the clothes is just a little bit too thick. So cut two meters of the green yarn and the red yarn, but pull out one of the strands of this green yarn and the red yarn just so that and, and so that it leaves you with three, whoops, so that the the yarn isn't as thick. So we're going to we're going to pull this out, but we're going to discard it. So we can just pull like this. Don't worry that it's all bunching up. So don't worry, and I am worrying. There we go. And it will, if you hang this, it'll all curl back up again into a thinner strand of yarn. And I've discarded the other piece. Now with a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook, we need to chain 24. So that's, and it needs to be quite a neat chain but not too tight. One, two, three. It says to start by slip stitching into the second bump from the hook. If you turn, turn the chain over, you can see the first bump and there's the second bump. So we just need to slip stitch into that second bump from the hook. Da, 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 in the back bumps only over the next 22 bumps, which is what you've got left, you need to do one single crochet and one half double crochet. So that's one single crochet and one half double crochet. Sorry, half double, I'll just go through that with you, is yarn over pull up a loop and pull through all three. And then it wants five double crochets. So yarn over, one, and five. Then seven half double crochets. Five. 
one. And seven. Then we're doing five double crochets. One. Two. Then one half double crochet. One single crochet. And a slip stitch in that very last bump. Pull your yarn through. Now you've got this very weird shape. Just lay that, that down. You might want to just press that. That we can do all, I think I'll do the pressing at the end. So this is the sort of the tie which we're going to fold in half like this. But it now needs to have its edging. So just not the very ends. Just a double knot. Whoops. Like that. And I'm just going to leave those tails for now because I'll I'll sew those in later. I'll just make that one a bit shorter. Right. So now for the edging, and this is the bit that's looks tricky and messy, but I'll take you through the whole stage of it. So now I've taken three meters of the red yarn, and I've taken a single strand out and keep that single strand because we're going to use it for sewing later. Now you need to fold this in half, this long strand, so it's 1.5 meters, if you like, on either side. Let me just fold that in half. So I've got the two ends there. Whoops. And then each one is equal because it's, oh, I suppose it's like leaving a very, very, very long tail. And we're going to count 10 in from that knot. So this is the right side of the tie because you can see this neat braid on either side. The wrong side is that kind of messy side. So with the tail on the right, count 10. So there's your first one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now then, go under that tenth stitch, pull up a loop, join it with a slips with a with a chain if you like, and then you need to do fourteen single crochets all the way along. So back into where you joined your yarn. One, two, three, oops, four, Thirteen, and there's your last stitch just there. Whoops, fourteen, then at the very end there, we're going to do another single crochet right in the end. Now then. We'll get, we want to make a little point at the end. So we've done a single crochet right at the on the end stitch. Now we're going to chain one. And now you see these two bars that are going across here. We're going to insert our hook 
through both those bars. Whoops. There's one. Oh, it's difficult to do it when I'm trying to keep it under the camera. So there, I've insert the hook under both those bars, yarn on over, and now we're just going to slip stitch through the loop that's on the hook and then turn the work and do a single crochet right back into that first stitch. Show you again, oops, sorry. Right back into that first stitch with a single crochet. And then you get this neat little point at the end. So if you single crochet all the way up the other side, until you reach the other side. So I'm now level. Can I do one more? Yes, we can do one more. Since I'm level with that other side. So now what I want to do is leave that stitch, turn my work to the to the back side. And now, turn it over. I'm going to use this long tail to single crochet all around the other side. So that when I fold the tail, when I fold the tie in half, it'll show the nice side will show at the, th the front, theoretically. Hang on. So I want to crochet. There are my tails there. So now, messy here because that'll all get hidden in the knot of the tie. So I'm just going to go back in there with the chain and then straight back in the single crochet all the way down the other side of the tie. When we get this sort of messy bit here, which is the knot, there's one more stitch to go into. So I'm going to go in there with a single crochet. I'm actually going to go in with a single crochet right into that knot. So it's a good idea not to make that knot too tight. Now we're going to do that picot stitch again. So do a chain. We're going to go under those two bars. There and there. Slip stitch. And then just going to tuck those behind. Go straight back into that first stitch on the other side of the knot. And then you have another neat little point where we can go all the way down the other side. Just go into there and then we need to pull that through. Again, you need to leave these long tails because you want to use those for making the knot later. So I'm going to pull that one through as well. if you like, you can knot those two 
together it's not essential because that's all going to get hidden but just to make it a bit more secure I'm going to knot so now when you fold the tie in half and you want the back to be a little bit here we go shorter than the front you'll see that you get this nice stitching on both sides okay so i'm going to just uh, press that slightly and i'm going to sew in all the ends but leave the red stick the red the red ends and i'll show you how we wind those around to make the tie now i've sewn in green ends make sure you've got the right side out so the longer end is the front of the tie and the shorter end is the back of the tie and obviously you can see the back of these stitches when you hold it like this but when you fold it you'll see the front of the stitches now take one of your strands and bring it across now you need to fold the tie so that the back is just a tiny little bit just a tiny little bit shorter than the front not too much you certainly don't want it hanging down and now you just want to take some time to leave i don't know about three stitches for the knot so with the piece of yarn that's coming out from this side that you've threaded through just leave that for a minute Make sure you've got that how you want it. Now I would start, that's going to go over there, to wind this just to pull it in a bit to give it that tie shape. Just wind it round for as many times as you like. Now I'm going to turn over and now I want to like just wind this round once. So that now holding on to the knot. You want to place a knot around the back. Just check that you're happy with the front. Yes, that's neat. Like so. And then you can make sure that that's a nice tight double knot at the back. And just you can weave in your ends if you like, but I'm going to cut mine because they do get hidden behind the shirt. Whoops. When I've sewn in all my ends of the shirt, that we will place just on the outside. And I'm going to use that red yarn, the single tiny single strand of red yarn, just to put a stitch through there and onto the back of the shirt, and the same on the other side. So that you want your knot to sort of rise slightly higher. You don't want it down here. It wants to just sit slightly proud and then sewn tightly into place. And so there you have your shirt onto the skirt.
Right, for the little pleated skirt, which I love this little skirt actually, it's worked out just perfectly. I'm going to do it in green so you can see exactly how it how it works. Now then, I've made my chain, it's a chain of 13, and then we start by slip stitching into the second bump from the hook. That's just a slip stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch into the next three. One, two, and three. Now we're going to single crochet. So sorry, that's four slip stitches counting the first one. Now we're going to single crochet for four stitches. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to half double for four stitches. One, one's catching, let's try it again. Yarn over. One, Two, the last two bumps, three, and the last bump is just there, four. So this time I am going to chain one and turn. Chain one and turn. And I'm going to work four, in, sorry, backwards from what I was going to do. So I'm going to work four half doubles, then four singles, then four slip stitches. But from now on, we're going to work in the back bump only. And this is how, so that's your first one is there. One. Two, another half double, back bump, three and four. You should get this nice little braid there. Then in the back bump, we're going to do four singles one, two, three. Four, and then we're going to do four slip stitches. Three of them will be in the back bump. One, two, three. But the last one will always be under both loops. So make sure you go under both loops for that last slip stitch. Chain one and turn. And we're going to do it again. Remember at the top, this is the top of the skirt, we always go under two loops because we want the top of the skirt to be quite firm because it's going to take quite a bit of strain. So that's your first slip stitch, second slip stitch, back loop only, third, and fourth, then back loop only single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then half doubles, one, two, three 
and four. And on the last half double, just give the yarn a little bit of a tug just to bring it in slightly closer. And then again, we'll chain one, turn, half double under both loops only. Sorry, half double under the back loop only for four, two, three, four, then single back loop only, and then slip stitch for four, only three of them being in the back loop only, and the last one gets right in there, it's quite tight the last one, under two, chain one turn, so again slip stitch under both because it's the top of the skirt, and then you're back into doing the back loop only. Now as you see it starts to spread out wider at the bottom and narrow at the top and eventually when you've done all the rows that you need to do it'll look like this. So then we just need to finish that off by pulling through that's the last row. The last row ended at the top of the skirt. And I'm going to weave in the end at the bottom and then just whip stitch all across the back of the skirt. And you get that nice little pleated. Now, if you notice, this looks incredibly narrow compared to the bear. But believe me, this really does stretch. and You don't want the skirt to fall down. So this is why I've done the amount of rows I've done, which tells you in the pattern, because with it being cotton and with it being crochet, it will stretch and eventually these start to open up and that you don't want the skirt to fall down. You want it to be able to fit quite neatly around there. So don't worry if it's a bit tight to begin with. Um, it will loosen up.